Hello and welcome. This is Jesse Gilmore and welcome to Time Mastery for Marketing Agency Owners uh, 103. And this topic is going to be based around morning routines and what's called four-dimensional living. And uh, this one's going to be a little bit different where uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, some concepts, uh, how they lead towards uh, really playing the long game of entrepreneurship. And then that leads towards you know being able to do daily tracking and then also uh, morning routines and really optimizing the use of that weekly time log that you did in uh, 101 and then how you carved out you know eight to ten hours per week in 102. Now if you're watching this and you haven't seen uh, the, the previous ones, everything stacks. This is a training uh, series and so uh, if you're watching this right now, please go back to 101, uh, finish the time log and then go into 102 to really carve out eight to ten hours for you to work on the business. Now, once you do that, then you're really set up to uh, start getting into morning routines and four-dimensional living and how that sets up for the long game of entrepreneurship. Uh, so, And then there's going to be a couple of different resources I'll give you at the end of this, uh, I'll give you some examples and, and so forth. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to get started. So one of the things is most gurus when it comes to like scaling and things like that, um, they're going to tell you some things that are completely wrong. And so I'm going to end up going through that. And then we'll talk a little bit about intrinsic and extrinsic motivators and really this decision to play the long game and then how to consistently uh, reach your goals based around this four dimensional living. So what most gurus will tell you uh, about growing a business is actually wrong. Uh, what they say is, is that you have to sacrifice all areas of your life in order for the business to succeed. And uh, I saw this on Instagram one time and it just blew my mind <laughs> uh, where they had like a checklist and it said marriage and it was a checkbox and it was empty. And then it said kids and it was, you know, the checkbox was empty. And then it said build your empire and there was a checkbox and it was like, yes. And this is the kind of stuff that you hear about all the time and it's really just BS um, because a lot of these gurus really have not mastered what it's like to live what's called a four dimensional life. They're really living this one or two dimension, meaning like they might be really good in uh, their body, you know, working out and being fitness oriented in business, but their marriage sucks, right? Or they are really, really big into making money, but then they have no connection to spirit or purpose or God or whatever you want to uh, connect to. And what happens is that people keep on thinking that in order for one thing to grow, another one has to fail. And that's kind of like this zero sum game of, of win lose, which is uh, not true. And what uh, gurus will talk about is like sacrificing everything in order for the, the business to succeed. When the truth actually is that sacrifices are needed, but not at the expense of like your health or your purpose or relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they'll say like, you need to, uh, you'll feel fulfilled by a seven figure business, right? And you can actually allow yourself to feel fulfilled in the pursuit of expanding your business. And you must have to, you know, they say like, you must do everything when in actuality you can't do everything and that's okay. You need to be able to rely on others in order for you to grow. So when it comes to kind of like your motivators, why are you actually in business, right? Uh, it's broken down based around a couple different things, either extrinsic or intrinsic motivators. An extrinsic motivator is when you do something in order for you to gain some type of external reward, right? And then in, uh, intrinsic motivation really comes when you engage in activity because you actually enjoy it and get personal satisfaction from doing it. And in extrinsic motivators, you know, examples would be posting on social media in order to get as many likes as possible or working long hours in order for you to pay bills, uh, you know, starting a business in order to become more famous, right? All these like external things that you don't really control, right? Um, but uh, that you're like putting your happiness on hold in order for that, uh, you know, extrinsic uh, external thing to happen. And an intrinsic motivator is really where uh, you have this inside out. You have an internal conviction to do something. If you're posting on social media to share ideas or lessons that you're learning with a community, right? Uh, working longer hours because you truly enjoy the work that you're doing, right? Starting a business in order to make a positive impact. If you can notice the difference between these two uh, types of motivations, 
it'll really kind of tell you, uh, you know, what is actually, um, uh, you know, what, what you're motivated by. And relying solely on extrinsic motivators, you know, the seven figures, uh, even though you might see that in my own messaging with 100, uh, 100K per month, uh, scaling to 100K per month, it's really based around the freedom that systems allow you to do where you can scale without burning out, right? And the extrinsic motivators, relying solely on extrinsic motivators, it's like motivation versus inspiration. And inspiration is really where uh, you're being pulled towards something. Now, how does this relate? It's really coming down to understanding that extrinsic motivations can lead to an ultimate sacrifice where you're letting go of parts of you. Like you can make tons of money, but not feel fulfilled at all. And this is kind of like a... It's kind of like a virus in the business community where uh, people think as though they, uh, you know, they really just want a seven or eight figure business, but it's at the expense of like their marriage or their, you know, health or things like that. And if it's un, uh, unchecked or if it's left unchecked, uh, extrinsic motivators can lead towards uh, business success, but actually feeling empty inside. And what we don't want to do is uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to actually commit to the long game. And so the decision to play the long game really comes to an understanding of four dimensions, uh, the four dimensional living. So let me move me up and there we go. Yeah. And so the decision to make uh, and, and commit to the long game really comes down to understanding that there are different dimensions of you and what make you, you. Uh, there's your health, which is made up both of a fuel or an input, think like fitness or uh, think about like a uh, fuel and um, uh, like food or the diet or whatever you take in and then fire like what do you actually do with that there's an output all right and then there's uh, kind of like your purpose which is uh, more based around like your being or your spirituality or who you are uh, you know deep down what your calling is you know some people um, think about spirituality or connection with the voice or god or whatever it is and really, the purpose is made up of both mental clarity, which is an input, and progression, which is an output. And we'll talk about uh, the, the actual like applications to this in a second. And then the third dimension is really relationships. So both from like an immediate family, like maybe spouse or kids, and a social circle, like your team or friends. And then uh, lastly, you have the fourth dimension, which is business or lifestyle. And it's really those long-term goals that are made up of both a lifestyle. So how do you live as an entrepreneur? And then your finances, kind of like the result of your activity. And the whole reason on why we're like really diving into time and time mastery is because it ultimately becomes life by design. And it becomes a, you know, a science, a really like a, something that you can predict. And that's what we're trying to create. And this leads towards the importance of daily deposits. So the key is, is actually to make de daily deposits in each one of these four dimensions. So that way, when you have to take a withdrawal, uh, then you have something in the bank, you know. Um, and so what you need to do is focus on, um, here's a couple different examples of living a four dimensional life, right? Uh, where every single day you're thinking about health, uh, made up of both fuel and fire. So fuel, uh, an example that I do. So these are all the things that I do in the morning is, uh, you know, did I drink a green smoothie today? Uh, if so, I'm like, check, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, for fire, did I sweat today? Did I go running or did I do a row machine? Well, those are my two kind of favorite things. Or uh, running with my son who's doing like a bike or pushing a stroller or go for a walk, whatever it is. And there's got to be some type of output, right? And if that was, um, if both of those was done, and like the fuel and the fire, then uh, I would basically mark that as a check that I did my health, right? And for purpose, uh, you know, it's made up of both mental clarity, input, progression, output. So clarity would be like meditation. And there's a lot of different ways of meditating. You can do it based, the easiest way is actually just breath. So and having a connection to the breath and really just allowing the breath to guide you. And whenever thoughts come in, you just kind of let them out, 
right? I might actually do like a, a whole training on meditations because I've been meditating for over a decade and it's awesome. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, clarity, did I meditate today? So that would be your input, all right? And then progression, did I journal today? And there's a lot of different ways of journaling. You can uh, journal where you're just basically cataloging, uh, you know, yesterday, this is what happened. Today, I'm doing this. Um, you can also do a thing called stacking, which is really based around taking some type of emotion or uh, like I'm angry, right? Uh, whatever that anger is and, and basically say like, why am I angry? What is it? You know, what, it, what stories am I telling? And kind of walk through a series of different questions. The easiest way to do it from a really high level is like what, why, lesson, apply. What happened? Why is it important? What's the lesson out of it? How can I apply it? Um, so that's, there's a whole bunch of different ways of journaling, right? Uh, it's not always just, uh, focused on maybe like guided prompts or something. So, um, but ultimately what you want to do with journaling is just capture what's going on, you know, uh, because when you look back on the progress and you start looking back on, you know, years, uh, you can get that in, um, that intrinsic motivation to keep going and just knowing how far you've actually come, Right. So (laughs) I'm very passionate about purpose. Uh, So then the next one is relationships. And uh, one of the things, hold on for one second. One of the things that I do uh, with my my wife, um, my spouse, and my kids is I write them daily notes. So like there's a whole bunch of like little notes that I write and I keep them. And it's really just uh, to give them love, appreciation, and honor. And, uh, you know, for relationships, uh, I, I asked myself, you know, did I write positive notes to my wife and kids today? Um, for social, did I reach out to a friend that I have been thinking about recently? You know, uh, and making these little tiny deposits in each person, right? And whenever you're doing this, you're not doing it to, you're not really doing it for um, like either response or like them to do something. It's more actually for you because you learn a lot about um, the appreciation of gratitude, right? And sharing love and sharing appreciation and all these really, really cool things. You're making daily deposits in this relationship category, okay? And then uh, for the fourth one, it's based around business and lifestyle. And the daily deposits are made up of both a development, so like what you take in, new information, and then declaration, so an output. So think about for develop, you know, did I learn something new in business today? And again, when you're thinking about um, like reading, I wish I had a book with me, Um, but um, when you think about reading a business book, for an example, you want to read until you have an aha. So whatever that aha is, that's what you capture. So uh, instead of reading like a whole chapter uh, and then trying to summarize or whatever, you might have certain insights that come up during that time where you're reading uh, that you want to capture. And again, use the same format, what, why, learn, apply. What was uh, learned? Why is it important? Um, What's the lesson out of that whole thing and how can you apply it? And when you do this over a day-to-day basis, over and over and over and over and over again, you're putting these daily deposits in. And it really sets up a really powerful morning routine. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something because uh, normally the challenge is based around tracking, right? And you want to gamify this whole thing. Uh, You want to make it to where you're actually motivated uh, to put those deposits in in each category and over a period of time, just like uh, you know, compound interest and stuff like that. Uh, it all adds up. If you think about what you can do with this, is if you're putting daily deposits into health, and you have, and you have to make a withdrawal, you have something in there, right? Uh, if you're eating healthy and you're you're working out and you're feeling fit, you get confidence, right? And then with p- uh, purpose, if you have uh, mental clarity from like meditation, and you're tracking your progress through journaling. Uh, then you have certainty, right? And if you have confidence and certainty, and then you move that into your relationships where you're building and cultivating relationships around you to uh, really foster uh, things like integrity and accountability and and uh, support and love and kindness, you know, uh, what happens is that you're you're building that outside um, that uh, that social circle to support you and you to support them, right? 
And then with the business, when you're learning something and you're applying it and every single day you're learning something new, figuring out how to apply it, and you're staying agile in this whole business, uh, you start to actually craft and uh, life by design and a business by design. And that's the reason why you're trying to create time mastery is because you ultimately want to expand. And I believe that every single business owner uh, that uh, got into business is actually like destined to expand. Your, your ultimate calling in life is to continue to expand, but it shouldn't just be the business expansion, right? It should actually be you and you learning and you growing and then uh, how that impacts people. I have a really good passion and purpose. I feel, feel as though we should be awakening people, right? So anyway, uh, so as you're kind of going through this, just start tracking it. Now you can use this thing called a whole, uh, whole, op, whole self optimization tracker. Any one of our resources, you do not ask for access. Just make a copy for yourself. And what you can do is you can just use this kind of as this uh, this checkbox, right? Um, you can also start tracking your awake times and then bedtimes, and then it starts calculating it based around when you go to sleep and when you wake up. Um, and then you can also track work and start if you really want to uh, get into work durations and things like that. Now, uh, and as you do it based around like the day or the month, then it kind of rolls up to a summary and then it kind of tells you exactly what's happening. So if this is beneficial, cool. Um, but your main, main thing is actually just to start tracking it. Now, how does this r relate to, so for, this is four-dimensional living. How does it relate to a morning routine and your time log? So what I've done is I've, I've taken a couple different um, time logs from clients and you know, remove the names and stuff like that. But if you look at um, this morning routine, uh, this one, uh, this client did not have any issues with the sleep routine or waking up at a certain time, which will be covered in 104. Uh, but with the morning routines, the problem was is that he was immediately going right into you know watching news. Now, what that does, and when you wake up and immediately you're uh, giving your all your power, all the power that was created during sleep, and you're giving it to um, you know, something else, something external. Watching the news is going to be something that depletes your energy, takes it away, um, adds uncertainty, you know, um, removes confidence. All the things that we talked about just a second ago that we're trying to build, um, having a morning routine where you immediately go into news is an example of that. And I have clients that uh, immediately go into emails or uh, they try to figure out exactly, you know, what they need to do today or whatever. You should have been planning that the day before uh, if you really needed to. And so what you want to do and what your action is moving forward is just to carve out one hour in the way beginning. So you wake up and then from when you wake up to one hour later, uh, you have done everything for you. So you have time for you, you know, uh, you want to be able to fill yourself up with a morning routine that works for you. I showed you examples of what I do. Some of my clients do those. Some, some clients kind of do something else. The main thing is, is that I'm just here to give you different ideas on what morning routine works out best for you. The whole key to this whole thing is just to make it to where you are filling yourself up. Okay. And so, um, when you kind of get this kind of system down to where sleep uh, is, you're waking up at a certain time and then as, at that certain time, then you start to invest in yourself uh, using maybe four dimensions, uh, four dimensional living. Uh, then what happens is that you come to your day with power, with certainty, with integrity, with responsibility, with accountability, all these really awesome things. Uh, maybe not sexy, <laughs> you know, but uh, it gets the work done. And if you really want to transition from hustler to CEO, this is the way you do it. So uh, this is an example of what my schedule ends up looking like. And let me move me back down here. Uh, so next week I have off. I'm recording this a little bit ahead of time. Uh, and really what it is, I t talk about the daily core four, just, um, you know, four dimensions. I'm, I'm basically doing things that are kind of getting into uh, that rhythm of filling me up, right? 
And then I have this kind of breakdown of exactly what I do before I even work. And by doing so, when I come to work, I am focused. I'm not distracted by anything else. I've already you know, made my daily deposits. And it allows me just to be, uh, be in the moment, right? And I actually don't work 40 hours. I work about 35 hours or so uh, per week. And the reason being is that I make it so it's very potent. That time that I'm actually going to be working, I'm going to be getting things done. Uh, I'm going to be planned. um, And really my morning routine sets me up to be able to do that. So your action from this video is really based around figure out what that morning routine is. Start carving out time in the way beginning. Now, some of my clients, I wrote down a, a couple of notes some of my clients talk about um, you know, having it to where the alarm that wakes them up is their phone and so then they pick it up and then they immediately go into email, right? So get like on Amazon some analog, <laughs> like super old school time clock alarm uh, so that way you're not using your phone. And in the next video, I'll talk about blue light and not looking at screens an hour and a half before sleep and how that affects your sleep and blah, blah. Um, but the main thing is, is based around uh, how you wake up. Just make sure that you're setting yourself up for some from success and stay away from things like the news or emails or anything that kind of depletes your energy in that first hour. After that, go ahead. But uh, that first hour is going to be based around you. Okay. Um, and then as you're kind of going through this, you're going to start to craft kind of like an optimal day or week, right? Kind of similar to what you, uh, what you got to see here. And, and so start with the morning routine. If we've already carved out eight to 10 hours per week for you to work on the business, that's really your in-between time. That's like right here, right? Uh, your in-between time when you're actually working. Uh, and then it, as how do you set that up to be success or, or be successful? Uh, it's going to be based around your morning routine and what you do in the morning. Cool. All right. Well, Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video uh, focused on nighttime routines.